Now let's talk about out-of-bound write vulnerabilities. What is it? Well, it's when ACID is used to calculate a pointer to some memory, which is out of bounds of the intended location, and subsequently ACID data is written to that memory location. Now, this is equally applicable to whether or not you're thinking about the intended memory locations as buffers on the stack, heap, global memory, or whether there's something like a custom allocation done through some API. The reason that we differentiate these from linear buffer overflows like stack overflows, heap overflows, and global overflows is because while it's true that all of those linear buffer overflows are out-of-bound write vulnerabilities, not all out-of-bound write vulnerabilities are linear buffer overflows. For the common causes of out-of-bound writes, I'm going to make a distinction between intrinsic vulnerabilities, which are found just directly inside of the source code, and manufactured vulnerabilities where an attacker achieves out-of-bound writes, but not directly via problems in the code. So with intrinsic vulnerabilities, these are generally down to pointer arithmetic gone awry. For instance, using an ACID value as an array index if you're dealing with a proper array buffer. On the other hand, if you have something that's a little more complicated in terms of data structure than just a linear array, then you might be accessing it via a base plus offset mechanism but if that offset is ultimately attacker controlled, then that could allow them to sort of skip forward through the intended memory locations or even skip backwards and ultimately land outside of the bounds of the buffer and cause a write to occur at that point. Making it a little bit more source codey, you know, you can think of array with acid inside equal to acid. So if some acid is assigned into an array where the index is attacker controlled, that's an out of bound write. Now, of course, we know behind the scenes, even this sort of construction in C is really just pointer arithmetic. So it might also occur that you have base plus acid, it goes into a pointer, and then acid goes into the dereference pointer, and that's an out-of-bound write. And in the extreme case of doing something wrong, the code may just straight up take a pointer that is acid from the attacker and use it to write into memory. We'll see an example of that in this section. Now, manufactured out-of-bound write vulnerabilities are things where the out-of-bound write is not directly one of those causes that I was just showing, but instead the attacker utilizes something like a linear buffer overflow, such as a stack overflow or heap overflow, and what they corrupt is maybe not directly the uh, return address on the stack, for instance. Maybe they there's a stack canary and they've got a pure linear overflow, and if they you know just tried to hit the return address, they would hit the stack canary and they don't have any other way around it, so that's maybe not a viable path for them. If instead they corrupt a adjacent local variable that happens to be a pointer, and if they can subsequently cause ACID to be written to that now overwritten ACID pointer, then that would constitute an out-of-bound write vulnerability. And so the important thing here is that once that sort of construction occurs, that is what we call an arbitrary write or a write what where primitive. And this is absolutely one of the most strong primitives that an attacker can have. Essentially, you can think if they can write anywhere they want inside of the memory range, there's a lot of possibilities for what they can do to take over the program. So again, why do we differentiate between out-of-bound writes and linear buffer overflows? It's because, you know, some vulnerabilities don't directly lend themselves to categorization as a linear buffer overflow. And once you have things like manufactured out-of-bound writes, then this becomes a much stronger primitive, a mechanism for bypassing uh, things like exploit mitigations. And you know, consequently, this just puts a lot of power in the attacker's hands. So I just wanna use this to reemphasize that a manufactured out-of-bound write starts as some other vulnerability class. So it starts as a heap overflow, a linear stack overflow, et cetera. And that's why it's important to close down those other primitives, even if, you know, it doesn't seem, you know, even if you think, you know, the mitigation will save me, I've got a stack canary. Well, again, you know, it all depends extremely much on the very specific nature of what data is adjacent uh, to a linear buffer overflow. So by closing down the sort of weaker primitive of a linear buffer overflow, then you can, in some cases, close down these manufactured out-of-bound writes, these manufactured write what wears that would otherwise cause an extremely powerful primitive to come into the attacker's hands. All right, so trivial example. Out-of-bound writes, we've got, you know, the trivial list of trivial example. We literally are just going to give the attacker control over I and J and then write attacker controlled value in here. So buffer is eight bytes. 
uh, string two unsigned long long taking in from attacker controlled arg v into i attacker controlled arg v2 into j and so write attacker control data to a location of their choosing. All right, so if we run our trivial example, for instance, with 1,1, one, one, argv of 1 was the value being written, argv of 2 is the offset to write it to, so 1 is written into a buffer of 1. Well, no problem there, no crash. If we say out of bound write at offset 8, which again, this is a 8-byte buffer, which means index 8 is out of bounds, and we're writing 41, 41, 41, which should look magical to you, it should look like an acid burn, because that is the hexadecimal value for A's. So if I do that though, it's actually no crash. So I've just written out of bounds and there's no crash. Well, that's interesting. If I do another one and I say now index nine, well, this does cause a crash and specifically it says stack smashing detected. So perhaps there's some mitigation in play there. If I write at offset 10, well, that does also not cause a crash, and offset 11 does cause a crash again. So just our observed behavior here, even if we didn't you know, know exactly what the stack looks like, I'm just gonna tell you that you know, I and J are right here, and buff is here. And so we write 4141 to buff of eight, which is outside of the bounds of the thing, and nothing happens. No crash, not exactly clear what's going on there. If we write to offset nine, then we do get a crash. Offset 10, nothing happens. Offset 11, got a crash again. So if you had uh, taken one of our classes at OST2, like the assembly class, you could go and you know throw this into a debugger yourself and reconstruct the uh, stack diagram. But I can tell you from having done that myself that this offset is unused padding space. And therefore, you know it's just easy to align the stack. And it's therefore not a problem if that gets overwritten. This offset instead is the stack canary. This is the exploit mitigation, and that's why when we wrote to offset nine, it specifically said stack smashing detected because the check for overflows that occurs before a function returns, before main returns in this case, the check is saying, oh, hey, I can see my canary has been overwritten. Looks like there's stack smashing going on. This right here was the saved RBP register, which you know you don't really need to care about. And this is the saved return address, which you do need to care about because we said that this is the uh, typical target of uh, target of exploitation. Now, I said you don't need to care about this. I only mean in the sense of, you know, we're not assuming that you know assembly in this class. Uh, there ha have been exploits where literally a single byte overwritten into a saved RBP register uh, will allow the attacker to take over uh, the control of the execution. So. Overwrites anywhere are bad. I'm just saying, you know, you don't need to care about that for now because I can't assume you know assembly. And with that, let's go look at some real examples.